Getting back to the doors. Come to the conclusion, the skin's got to come off. There's, there's just no way around it. You know, we come this far, ripping stuff apart. These skins have got to come up. Running my fingers here. Let's get, get right. And you can feel right about there. It starts to bulge. You know. Let's see if I can get an angle there for the light. Yeah. That's not gonna end here. It's gonna get better around here somewhere. Mm, spot welds are kind of sparse, so might not be too bad. One there, there. It's on its own here, all the way along. And I can get it a few here. Probably get those two. Can't get behind the hinges. So looks like they're like three inches apart. So I'll do what I can while it's mounted on the hinges. It's just a good work work position. The door's held in place for me. Do what I can, then take the hinges off. chunks. In case I don't remount them, before I repaint, I mean that's no good once I paint, I, I have no reference. So if I just take a drill and go right through into the sheet metal, then I always got a spot that I can check because these doors are good. I mean they may need a, a few bit of tweaking after I put the, the pins in the pin and bushing kit but 
right now I'm pretty happy with the fit so I'd like to get it back into this position and go from there. Let's have a look. Looks okay up there. And then down here, the fold is pretty weak, fatigued. See the chunks of rust in there? I can't hold the light. We know it's given way there. So I'm just going to take the grinder and take the edge off there so I can get it out. And we got Bondo happening down here. Bondage. side the hinge side it's pretty good for about five inches uh, the wheel well side yeah I was right that was there was surface rust or um, inside out rust poking through this is all good up here, that'll blast up nice. And of course the top will be good too. Now, I can knock this dent out if you can see it. See it right there. Yeah. I can fix that. Now, <laughs> okay, I haven't looked at the, the door structure itself. for sure. Parts of the side here too. So basically the top half is okay and the bottom is iffy. That's the flange I'm talking about. Okay, halfway up. Mm, the hinge side looks a little better. Let's have a look in here. Perfect. Now I can get it get to all the stuff in here. Blast away.
It kind of looks like from the seam down here. flanges that's weak to there looks pretty good up there up there down to here so pretty well to the seam again might be able to save that there well yeah a little bit lower on the side I'll scrape all this off I'll save the dent till last. Let's do the rust restoration part. Slipping and sliding. crease right there but anyways that's in the range I'll get back to that later I just wanted to get in the ballpark to get everything you know relaxed and ready for surgery <laughs> surgery Okay, I got some wet paper towels here to act as a heat sink. It'll help to minimize the warping. Looks like we're gonna have a natural trough right here, so I'll have to keep damping that down, or uh, drying it out, I mean.
Looks pretty good. Hey guys, back on the wagon and having a clean up for two days, reorganizational days, was getting out of hand around here, I couldn't find anything, doesn't look like I've done much but took a load to the dump, landfill, recycle, Got my brake. I built a stand for it on casters so I can wheel it out. I want some storage underneath. And I had my tame table saw up at the house there on the deck. It'd been there for too damn long, so I it's cast iron. I had to take it all apart. Bring it down in sections because it's just too heavy. Too heavy, man. Uh, cleaned outside. Cleaned the tool shed. Got warm. I'm still around freezing outside. Oh, here's where I have my compressor. It's in this little room under my deck. And I just drop a curtain when I'm sandblasting so that the sand doesn't come in here because it's creating a, a low pressure area in here. Of course the dust is going to be drawn into my compressor. Dual stage compressor. Uh, it goes up to 160 and I've dialed it back so it maintains 80 pounds. That's all you need for sandblasting. And I don't know if you can hear it, but I always have it just on a. It's hard to get it to dial it in to crack that bleeder in the bottom of the tank. So it's just. It's hissing a little bit of air out then it's always getting rid of the moisture too because it has a you know a, a trough in the middle there in the center of the tank and it drains the water out automatically so then you don't rust your tank out right yeah so then I keep the fan on when I'm sandblasting I turn the fan on and that helps to keep it cool too so if you keep it cooler you won't get as much moisture in the lines as well. Two stage 220 motor on it. Home Depot. It's the biggest one they had. Uh, maintains sandblasting pretty good. 80 pounds. Uh, by that time, the pots run out so. Like it bleeds down, bleeds down to about 80, and then by that time I gotta fill it back up again. I wanna get to my Chevy here. Once I finish the Le Mans. Uh, echoes, echoes more in here. here. That's a good sign. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Got my piece ready to go. I can weld that up today.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 